Hello, everyone, and welcome to this UK Data Service webinar introducing the Open Database Connector. I'm Marguerite. I'm a Senior Communications Officer working for the UK Data Service. And presenting today is Peter Smythe. He is a Research Associate working for the UK Data Service at the University of Manchester. Thank you all for coming. And let's start with what we are discussing today, which is what is ODBC. Um, so what we're going to show and look at in this webinar is a definition and background of ODBC, an explanation of why we would want to use it, because it's not always necessary to use ODBC to connect to a database, but sometimes it has its advantages, and that's what we're going to try and cover today. Um, I'll explain what ODBC drivers are available because each database tends to have its own ODBC driver and you've got to make sure there's one available and you've installed the right one for your database. And then I'll go through the, the process of installing an ODBC driver. They, they tend to be slightly different for each ODBC driver, but there's enough commonality in the process for once you've seen one, you, you understand what's going to be needed for any other one that you may need to install. And then we'll go through some examples of using ODBC. Um, we've got examples in Python, in R, and in Excel. So let's start with the definition. What is, what is ODBC? Well, it stands for Open Database Connectivity, or it's more, probably more commonly referred to as Open Database Connector. It was developed by Microsoft in the early 1990s. And it's effectively, it's an API, an application programming interface for accessing database systems. We had a, a webinar on APIs um, a, few, a couple of months ago, so hopefully if some of you were with us then, you, you understand what an API is. But essentially what it is, it allows um, a, a common interface, a common set of commands which can be given to an application that the application understands and can respond again in a a well-defined way and give that response back to the person who, who made the request. And this makes it very easy to provide interfaces to applications even though behind the scenes the application may change over time. The API is often referred to as drivers, which I think I've already done once or twice, and certainly it's the way I would normally refer to as a, an ODBC connector as an ODBC driver. Oops, overshot there. Let's go back one. Um, each database system will have its own API and hence its own ODBC driver. So an, an ODBC driver is associated with a database system, not with the application that's going to make use of that ODBC driver. Um, for Java-based applications, which are typically non-Windows applications, if you're using Linux or whatever, there's also something called JDBC, which is Java Database Connector, and that serves a very similar purpose to ODBC. But we'll, they are sufficiently similar for us not to need to consider them separately, and we'll just be looking at ODBC today. So why would we want to use ODBC? Let's start this by considering the situations where you don't really need to, need to use ODBC at all. If you've used um, Microsoft Access as a database, part of the uh, Microsoft Office package, what you get is a single database system package which contains two parts. You get a database engine, which is used to store your data in and actually process the query to retrieve the data from the database, but you also get a GUI, graphical user interface. And this is the part which the user, the end user, actually sees when they're trying to make use of Microsoft Access. This allows the user to interact with the database engine by, it gives you query editors where you can write your queries in a very graphical way if you want to, and it will also present the results in in nice tabular format and allows you to create nice reports which can be generated and, and used offline. But essentially what, what we've got here is that there are two parts of, of this package all in one, on, all installed at the same time, the database engine and the GUI. So in pictures what we effectively have for Microsoft, Microsoft Access is the GUI and the database engine and it all comes as a single package. You just install Microsoft Access and then you 
both ends of both the GUI and the database engine are there for you. If we look at some of the um, bigger databases, such as Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, and MySQL, they all have database engines and GUIs, just like Microsoft Access does. The difference here is that they're essentially separate products. So what this means is you can install, install a database engine without installing the GUI, and a single GUI installation can give you access to many database engines. Now, in practice, in our um, desktop environment, that's not a very likely scenario. But for large organizations running multiple databases, it can be very useful to just have a single GUI which controls all of the databases. So you can see the advantages of having the GUI actually as a separate item to the database engine itself. If you did install them both, then effectively you end up with an arrangement very similar to the Microsoft's access environment that we, we looked at a minute ago. The difference is, of course, these are bigger databases and there's more functionality involved. So what we've seen for Microsoft Access is that, and for the larger databases, what we effectively have is the GUI separated but connected to the database engine. They're separate applications, but they're very tightly coupled. Again, we're not using ODBC here. That, that's just the way you would normally um, install and, and, and use the, these database systems. So the point being that you can install a database engine without installing the GUI. So instead of this situation, what you could effectively do is say, I don't want the GUI. And this is where ODBC comes in. So we now have some database, and as I've said before, this could be SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, and many, many other ones. Almost all of the large database systems will have an ODBC, allow you to connect via ODBC. And what we're going to do is get an ODBC connector, which is specific to that particular database that we're going to use. And then from the ODBC connector, we are going to be able to connect a whole variety of different products and applications. So, for example, we can use R to connect to ODBC and onto the database, or we can use Python, which are those programming environments. Alternatively, we can use Excel or things like SPS and Stata and what have you. So just get you through, through that in, in words. You can have ODBC connections with many, can be used by many third-party applications such as Excel, Stata, SPSS, MS Access. This is a different set to what I've just shown you on, on the picture, but the point is there are many, many more which can be used in this way. Equally, you can use ODBC connections from programming environments like R and Python, as we've already said. Slight, slight complication here is that when you're using the ODBC drivers with these specific packages, uh, with these languages, you typically need to add need an additional package or library in order to interface to ODBC itself. And these, these packages or libraries are essentially little mini APIs associated with the language themselves. So in Python, you have the Py ODBC package, and in R, you've got the R ODBC library. And these are easily installed. If, if you have these languages installed on your desktop, it's very easy to install these additional packages and libraries to, to make it, to, to, to allow you to use ODBC. The next thing we want to do is look at how do we install ODBC drivers. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go through a specific example uh, of this. But before we do that, it should be pointed out that some of them are automatically installed with the software. And in particular, the Microsoft products like Excel and Access. When you install those on your PC, the ODBC drivers associated with them are automatically installed. Um, notice. I said Excel there. Excel, you can actually use both as a client application to access some database, or you can actually use Excel as a, a sort of database and access it from other sources as well. So that's on both sides of the coin. And other Microsoft products do that as well, like uh, Microsoft SQL Server can be used to access other databases via ODBC, but principally it's used to provide its own ODBC driver so other applications can access it. 
for those which aren't installed, you need to download the code from a database vendor or a third-party site. When I say download the code, basically the ODBC driver is a, is a program which you install on your PC. And you can go to a vendor site like MySQL to get the MySQL ODBC connector, or you can go to you can get a Hive connector. Hive is the relational database associated with Hadoop, which is a big data ecosystem, which again, we, we've had a few um, webinars on in, in the past, and that's what we're going to demonstrate today um, when we do the demonstrations. Um, if you're installing ODBC drivers, you will typically need admin rights on your PC or laptop in order to install it. But once you have installed it, you only have to install it once and it will be available to all of the users of that, of that machine. So actually going through the process of installing the ODBC driver, we're going to do this for the MySQL one just, just as an example. So you're going to go to the site, which is this one here, which is I think it's also mentioned at the end in the further information slide. And you download the correct version for your applications and architecture. So, for example, you might have a Windows machine and you might have a 64 bit application that you're going to use it with. You've got to be, be careful, although Windows, a modern Windows system will almost certainly be 64 bit Windows, what you're really interested in is the, how many bits your application is. Now, you, that may not be something which you've ever considered before, so I'm, I'm just a little bit of a warning here is that many Microsoft Office installations are installed as 32-bit 30 applications, and R and Python, if you've installed them yourself, you would normally go for the 64-bit installations. But either, either of those could be swapped the other way, way around, so you, you really need to know which one it is that you're, you're going for or what one you need. Um, when you go to the MySQL ODBC driver site, this is the sort of screen that you're going to get presented with. You select the platform, Microsoft Windows, and then you've got the option of picking whether you want the 32-bit installer or the 64-bit installer. You can actually download these as zip files if you want to, but I, I would recommend you use the MSI installer because then when it's downloaded, you just double-click on it and it will run a little wizard to install the ODBC driver for you. Um, what I said before about making sure you get the right one, the 32-bit or the 64-bit, in fact, there's nothing to stop you downloading and installing both 32 and 64-bit if you want to, um, but you do have to configure them separately um, depending on the application that you're going to use. So let's consider configuring these ODBC drivers now. Um, once you've installed, you need to install a little bit of configuration, and the reason for this is that the ODBC driver has to know things like um, who it is you're, you're going to talk, who you are, what database you're going to talk to, and so on. So it varies f slightly from one drive and database to another, but they're all basically the same sorts of information that you need to give it. And this is things like the username, your username and password, because you're going to access a database which require, is typically going to require you to authenticate to that database. So that explains them. You need to know the location of the database. If you, if you remember back to that little diagram where we had the GUI and the database engine, and, and the whole point is that we've now separated the two, and we've stuck ODBC in the middle. Because that the two are separated, the actual database engine doesn't actually have to be sitting on, on your PC anymore. It could be remotely connected to it, or you may need to remotely connect to it. So you need to know where this database system is. It could be your PC, it could be some remote location. And again, because we're talking, typically talking about um, the larger database systems, and like Microsoft Access, where the database system itself can actually contain many, many databases, then you need to tell it what database within that system you're actually going to try and access. So what we have next is, um, this is the example of a Hive ODBC driver, that the window that you get when you say you want to configure the driver. And there's only a few, there's lots of things in there, but only a few of them cover things that we need to, to provide. So typically, what we need to do is give it um, the host address. This is the database system you're trying to access. And you can see here in this example, all I've actually given it is the, the IP address of the machine on which this Hive database is going to be running. 
that covers that part. We then have to say what database we're interested in within this Hive installation. And the default database for Hive is a database called default, which is what I've left out of two, because that's where all my tables are. And then, but I still need to authenticate, and so I still need to provide it with a user, uh, username and a password. But with that done, everything else I can leave the same. If you, if you look, um, so that, that would be the Hive ODBC driver. Looking at the MySQL one, it's actually very similar, a bit cut down, but again, bits of information that you need to give it are root, password, a big card user, which is root in this case, the password for root, the root user, and again, the database that you're interested in using. Uh, you may have noticed that on, on both of these, um, both of these, there is a little test button just to the right of, of the, the bit I've covered in red there. And if you click on the test button, it will actually make a connection to the database just to check for you that you've, you've given, given all the correct information. It's a very useful thing to do, so you make sure you, you, you do actually have a legitimate connection into that database system. Okay, so having set up your, set up your ODBC driver, and configured it correctly, we can then think about using it. So what we're going to look at are some examples, and the examples I'm going to show you are, we're going to use Hive as the principal database, so we're going to connect, we're going to connect Hive to Python, using Python, and then we're going to use it Hive data to R, and then we're going to do it using Excel, which is a, a third-party package, okay? So I'm going to leave the presentation for the time being and start looking at some of these packages. First one is Python. Now, for um, Python, um, I've got a few little scripts set up here. I'm using Jupyter Notebooks, as I've done on previous webinars. Um, some of the information I'm going to just run through quite quickly because a lot of it is just Python rather than uh, talking about ODBC. But the first, in this first line here, this import statement tells the system what packages I'm interested in, and here I've got my Pi ODBC. If I run that, it just runs, I don't get any response to it. The second, now that I've got this package in, Pi ODBC, I can make calls like PyODBC.connect. This is going to be make a connection to an ODBC driver, and the ODCB driver I'm interested in is this. Sample Hortonworks Hive DSN. If you remember from a couple of screens back when I was configuring the Hive ODBC, that was the name that it had been given. So when I run that, I get a connection, hopefully, and then in this next little paragraph, I can actually start using the connector, this connection. And what I'm going to do here is I'm effectively, I won't go through all the Python, but effectively I'm going to run this little query select star from the geog table, geog all table in the Hive database. Um, that's about as basic an SQL type command you can get. It just says return all of the rows from that table called geog all. And what it's going to do is, in fact, that's what the command is, but then I'm just going to say I only want the first one, which is why I've got this fetch one. And then if that was successful, if it successfully collect, selected um, a row from that table, I'm going to print the row. So when I run this, what I should see is the ODBC or, or the Python program is going to connect to ODBC, ODBC connects to the, the Hive database, it runs a query select star from job all on the database, the database returns the results in, back down into Python and then I can print what the result was. So if I run that and I wait a second or two, I can see I've got this is the first row from the geog or table. Um, it's got lots of different um, columns in there, we won't go through them all, but that is effectively one row of that table coming back. So now I've actually got the data back in, into the Python environment. If I wanted to be more ambitious on the second one, Again, I've got the same select statement, but here I'm going to fetch all of the rows instead of just the first one. And here I'm going to print what is effectively the, the seventh index number seven 
from the, each row being returned. And index number seven is actually this, this text line, bit of text up here. So if I run that, it's going to go to the data, go via ODBC to the database and return all of those lines, all of those values in that column there. And you can see them down there. And as there's more than 14,000 of them, we don't really want to go through them all, but the, the point is I, I could have put them into other processing and uh, offer whatever it was I, I needed to do. So just, just clear that. This next one is really just to illustrate how sort of flexible the system is. You don't have to have all of your query in a single line like that. You can set it up uh, as two parts of a variable and you just append them together and instead of using the cursor execute with actually a string you can just put the variable name in there and then it runs the same thing and here what I'm doing here I'm counting how many rows there are in the LXC uh, table which is again a table in the hive environment on the Hadoop system if I run that it comes back in terms of over 3 million rows, which is just counted. Python hasn't counted them, Hive counted the rows and just returned the answer to, to, to Python. And all, all I've done here at the bottom is to show that it came back in about one second. So it's, it's quite fast at processing the queries. And then on this last one, what we've done looked at so far is we've just done very basic SQL type statements but in fact because we're talking to Hive we can actually send it any command a Hive understands and one of the things a Hive understands is this is a command called show tables which as you can probably imagine is going to show me all of the tables that are in that database so if I run that then I just get a nice little list of all of the tables available into the database. So for example, I've got a table called DT9. That's all I've got there. Okay. So that's using ODBC Connector and Python together to access the Hive database. If we now move on to R, in R, again, I'm using the, um, the standard R Studio environment, which we, we've used before in other webinars. Um, I'm just going to run these first few lines up here to set the scene, um, say what libraries I want. Notice that this top library, RODBC, this is the one we're really interested in on this occasion because that's going to allow us to, to connect to ODBC. And hopefully, um, that's, I think that's okay. And then, having done that, I've got a command here which is very similar to what we saw in Python. The, 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 um, the function name is different, it's called ODBC Connect here, but again all I'm giving it is the name of this Hive ODBC Connector I want to make use of, sample Hornworks Hive DSN, and I'm assigning that to a variable name there. So if I just select that line there and run it, and that comes back and it makes, you can tell from this line up here that that's made a connection. And again, the only reason, channel is just um, a variable name. I could have called it X, Y, or Z if I wanted to. I've just happened to call it channel. And from that point, in the same way as we did in Python, I can run another function from our ODBC library called SQL query, which has quite a, a meaningful name. I'm going to run an SQL query. I'm going to use the channel that I've just set up, i.e. the ODBC connector I've just made a connection to. And in here, I'm just got another very simple um, select statement in it written in SQL. And if I run that, the results of that select statement, i.e. all of the rows from that elect 9 jog table are going to come back and then they're going to be written into this verb, uh, this effectively is going to be a data frame called DF1. So if I run that, and you can see up here, DF1 is now returned, and I've got 143,290 observations of 13 variables. If I wanted to have a look at them, I can do this and just see the, the various values for those rows in there. So the, the point is, having got this far, I've now got the data back from the Hive database and it's now sitting in a standard R um, 
data frame, and from that I can do anything I like to it. So I've just got down here a little bit of R script to draw a couple of graphs. I'm just going to run that all together, just to show that what I've really got is genuine data from from Hive, and when it finishes running, I've got a couple of nice graphs. I mean, I've just chosen to do a couple of graphs. Once you've got the data back in the data frame in R, you can do anything you like to it, as you would do with any kind of R analysis that you're interested in doing. Um, just, just a bit of variation. Um, I've got here um, using uh, something very simple and very similar, but here I'm using the MySQL ODBC driver, which we, we I showed you downloading before. And again, it's exactly the same. I've just got the library R O D B C, which I won't need to run because I've already run it. Um, I've got I've changed this very name just to make it distinct. But again, the O D B C connect statement is exactly the same as we had before. Only this time, I'm saying my SQL. And <laughs> in here, I'm just going to run a very simple query to return data from a table called city. And I'm going to put this into DF2. When I run that, it runs exactly the same. And you can see here I've got 4,079 variables. So. Um, the other thing I just wanted to point out when, when, when you're doing this, so far I've just used very simple um, select statements and, and uh, SQL statements and, and the show tables, which I did as well in Python. But um, you're not actually restricted in how complex um, these SQL statements can be. In fact, it can be anything which Hive, in this case, because we've got Hive connect, we're using Hive connector, anything which Hive accepts as SQL, as valid SQL or HQL, you can put into this query. So here, what I'm doing here, D, the table DT9, which we saw before, so I'm not going to run this because it already exists. But here we're creating that table DT9, and it's selecting various um, columns from two different tables. So I've got a join on here. So I'm joining geog all in like months, and I've got substrings and where clause and all sorts of things. There's no real limit on how complicated this query can be. The advantage of this is, of course, that you can actually, from your R environment, you can have Hive do all the heavy lifting work by doing your um, aggregations and joins and what have you, and then just have the results of all that returned back into your R environment. And then off you go and, and you can run your queries and run, draw your graphs and whatever you like. So there's no real restriction here on what you can actually put into this, this SQL query um, function, any kind of valid HQL. Okay, so that is using R, and finally we said we'd use Excel. So I've got Excel open here. This is a, a, a an empty workbook in Excel. If I get to data, and I can say from other sources and from Microsoft Query, uh, I should say that depending on what version of Excel you've got, these might be in slightly different positions, but Microsoft Query would definitely be there, and from uh, when you click on that, you get open data source, and you can see down here, sample hive DSN, which is my um, ODBC connector for hive. So I'm going to say OK. Now, as soon as I click OK, Excel itself will make the connection to the database, the hive database, and it'll actually get me a list of all of the tables on that hive database. So again, you can see DT9 still up there. OK. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go for something called elect months, elect months. I'm going to say I want all of the columns. There's four columns in there. If you want to know what columns are, you can you can expand that, and it will come back and tell you. So I probably shouldn't have done that. Okay. Um, you click on next, and you can do things like um, filtering what you want. We're not going to bother with any of this, but if you wanted to, you could do. We're going to say you can sort them by things if you want to, but we won't bother. All we're going to interest to do is getting this data back into Microsoft Excel. So we click, click finish. It comes back and says, where do you want to put the data? Well, top left is fine. We're just going to say OK. 
And then we wait a few seconds. You get this little message up here. It's getting the data for me. Oh, look, it's returned all of the data. And if I go to the end of that table, you can see, well, pretty much 300,000 records it's returned. Okay. And of course, once you've got it in Excel, you can do whatever you might want to do with the data, draw graphs or do further processing or whatever. Now, I just want to, um, just to, to emphasize that, again, um, what I was saying before about the complexity of, of some of these queries, if I just go through this process again, and it doesn't really matter at this point what I pick. I, I'm just going to pick this core detail record. I have no idea what that is, but it's got lots of things in it. And just go through this again. But at the end here, instead of just saying you turn the data in Microsoft Excel, I'm going to say view the data or edit the query in Microsoft. Edit Edit query, Microsoft query, and if I click on finish, instead of putting the data straight into, into the Excel worksheet, I actually get Microsoft query come up, and it effectively shows me what the data is down here. But what is interesting, if I click on the SQL button here, I can see the statement, the SQL statement, which it's sent via the ODBC connector to Hive to get this data back. Okay? Now, I can wipe all of that out, and write something completely different in there, like my show tables, or any other valid SQL statement. And if I say OK, um, Microsoft Query gets a little bit upset because there's no, we can't draw you a picture of that, but we don't really care about that. Because then what I get back is my list of tables, as I had before, and I can just return that into Excel. In some way. So I can effectively get, I can again write a query to suit what I want rather than just do simple select and, and filtering from tables. So again, I've just done a show tables there, but again, I could have create, had to create tables or done complex aggregations in the Hive environment and then only have the results returned to Excel. Okay, so it's a way of getting the, the heavy work done on the Hive system which is on a server somewhere, and then you just get the, the, the aggregated results back into your application or your programming environment, and from there you're in a comfortable environment and you can process that data as, as you may choose. Right, so that is it for the demonstrations. So back to the PowerPoint slides. Oops. And a little bit more information where you can get these ODBC drivers for. Um, I've given you the one for the Hive ODBC and the MySQL one, which we use. Um, basically, if you've got any other database, like um, Postgres or, or anything like that, if you just Google the name of the database followed by ODBC, you'll undoubtedly get a link of where you can download the, 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 the suitable driver from. And with that, we have any questions. Thank you, Peter, for presenting today, and thank you to everyone for attending. Hope you found it interesting and useful.